Okay, hello everybody. Uh, thank you for joining me here today. Uh, I know it's a long session, so I appreciate the sacrifice. Uh, my name is Miro Cupag. I'm a software developer at DNA Stack, uh, where we're building a cloud platform for genomics. Uh, but I'm here today to talk about JShell. JShell is something that I started using a couple of months ago, and uh, it basically made its way into my day-to-day uh, -day usage. So I thought it would be useful to share this experience and basically do a really fast-paced demo of what JShell can do hopefully using some cool examples. So JShell is Java's implementation of REPL, so read, eval, print loop. So it's basically a tool that loops and continuously reads your input, evaluates it, and prints out the output. So think interactive shells as you know them from other languages, such so as Scala, Groovy, Python. Uh, so it's particularly good when you need to do something very quickly. So let's say you're doing some pattern matching, you're writing a regular expression. Most of us would need a couple of tries to get it right. So it's a perfect example of something that you could evaluate using REPL. Traditionally, before JShell, you would have to create a test case uh, or create a class in your code, add the method, put the code there, compile it, run it. Then if it doesn't work, go back, edit the code, compile and run it again. Uh, with JShell, you can basically just type the statement and you immediately see the result. So you don't need to wrap it in a method, in a class, mm -hmm. and all that stuff. So it's really useful when you're new to the language. Uh, you're just starting with Java. JShell can get you to a basic Hello World program uh, pretty quickly. You don't need to worry about concepts such as the main method, classes, compilers, uh, all of that. But it's also pretty useful for experienced developers. Uh, when you're prototyping, just sort of creating uh, more and more complex code, JShell is a really good tool that takes you that, that first mile. It's good, it gets a bit awkward to use when you start doing some complex things, but it's not an ID and it's not meant to be an ID. Uh, it's also really useful for exploring new APIs and language features. Mm -hmm. And just in general, when you're switching technology stacks, you did a project in Python, you're coming back to Java, and you need a reminder of how something works, it's really, really easy to prototype using JShell. And that's, far, that's as far as I'm going to go with slides. Uh, so I'm going to switch to something that I usually try to avoid doing during a talk, and that's a live demo. So what I have here... Uh, is JDK9. Uh, is this, is the font size okay? Is everything readable, by the way? Great. So this is built uh, 159, so it's probably a week or two old. And since quite a few builds ago, JDK comes uh, with JShell bundled in. So I can just run it here. It's in my Java home, it's on my path. And you can see the prompt coming up. So the first thing that you should know about JShell is that it accepts two types of inputs. There's snippets, so Java code that I want to evaluate, and there's commands to the tool, to the JShell itself. And these always start with a slash. And we're going to show a couple of these, but let's start with something really simple. I'm just going to do a simple expression, 2 plus 2, and you can see two interesting things here. First of all, 2 plus 2 equals 4, which uh, in retrospect is not that interesting. I may have oversold this example. But you can also see that it's assigned to something called dollar $1. And dollar $1 uh, is an implicit variable that JShell created for me, and it does that whenever you have an expression, the result of which you don't assign to anything, it just creates a variable for you. And I can use that uh, in my own expressions. I can create an explicit variable and say it's going to be $1 times 10, and you can say it's 40. And I can also modify uh, $1, which might seem a bit counterintuitive at first, uh, that the implicit variables are also mutable, but you can definitely do that. And that brings us to the first command, which is vars. The vars command uh, lists all the variables that I have defined. And JShell has this prefix matching on commands, so uh, you can just do uh, a unique prefix, and it's going to execute the command. So let's say I can do something like this and get the same result. So these are very simple expressions. Let's try a couple of statements. So let's do a simple hello world, system out print line. Hello, DevOx. And here we go. Uh, you might have noticed that I haven't specified a semicolon uh, at the end. JShell takes care of that as long as you have sort of single statement snippets. Uh, you also don't need to worry about checked exceptions. You can do uh, something like sleep for, let's say, two seconds, and it's going to go through. So let's say I want to find what the current time is. 
I'm going to use zone date time for this and its method now. If I try running this, JShell tells me uh, that it doesn't know what this is and I need to do an import, which is fair enough. So I'm just going to import Java time and run it again and it goes through. But th this brings up an interesting point. I had to do an import to manipulate time, but I didn't have to do anything to just print stuff out or manage threads. And that's because JShell comes with uh, a couple of default imports. And there is a command, as you would expect, slash imports that allows me to list those. So there's a bunch of them. They're sort of initialized at startup, and you can customize this. And then there's the one that I did right now. So that's vars and imports, the first two commands. There's also methods and types for listing methods and classes, respectively. So let's try to create a few and see how that works. So I'm going to create a method, say hello. Uh, it's going to take a name, and it's going to return hello and the name you gave it. So it's here. I can try calling it, and I, th I can list the methods. Similarly, I can create a class. And you might have noticed that I'm not using uh, access modifiers anywhere. That's because they're basically ignored uh, at this level. So I'm going to create a class called hello printer and just give it one method, uh, public static void say hello and make it print to standard output. So let's do this. Hello, DevOps. And I made a typo somewhere. Yes, thank you. Great. So I can list the types, I can call the method, and everything works. I can also manage all my snippets from here. So I can decide to uh, remove the method, and I can, for example, edit. Uh, the class, which brings up an editor, and I can take advantage of you know proper formatting, indentation, things like that. Yeah, you can also change it and instruct JSON to something else, but by default, it just picks up whatever you have in the editor variable. So I'm just going to do something like this. You can also open uh, external files, and I actually prepared one here. Let me show you the file. It's pretty simple. Uh, there's a single class. It's called Hello Handler, and it implements the HTTP handler interface from the JDK. You would find implementations of this in JuxRS, for example, but I just created a really simple one. And my handler basically just takes a request and always responds with 200. Everything is OK, and attaches a greeting in the, in the body of the response. And the greeting is always just set to Hello DevOx. So I'm going to use this HTTP handler to show two things. Uh, I'm going to show how to load this external snippet into JShell, and I'm going to show you how to create a simple HTTP server in Java, which I think is a good example because that's something that people usually think is really complex to do in Java. It's going to take a lot of code, but in reality, it's actually very simple, and you can do it with plain JDK. So let's go back to JShell, and let's open the file. And I'm going to use the list command to show me all the active snippets. So there's stuff that I did before, and then I, at the end, I have my handler. So everything was loaded properly. So now I can try to create the server. And I remember there was a static factory method on this. Uh, I don't remember the parameters, but JShell tells me I need to give it a port. Let's say 8,000, and that's basically it. I'm going to add an endpoint. Let's call it slash hello, and I'm going to attach my new favorite handler to this. There we go. And now I just start the server. So if everything went through correctly, I should be able from my terminal to do a curl request against localhost 8000 slash hello. And indeed, we see hello devox. So we've seen how to explore stuff in the JDK and how to load external snippets. Uh, what we haven't seen yet, and that's where the power of JShell really is, 
is exploring third-party party libraries or just playing around with your own code. And that's something that you don't usually see in examples, but it's actually pretty easy to demonstrate. So what I have here, I downloaded a jar file of Guava, which most of you probably know. It's a pretty cool library from Google that basically bundles a bunch of cool utilities for doing various stuff with Java. It's, uh, it's very useful. One of the useful things that they have are immutable collections. So we're going to try to load it and uh, explore the API a bit. So I'm going to modify the context and add my jar file uh, on class path. Conveniently, I have it in the directory where I started JShell from, so this is pretty easy. Uh, I'm going to import collections, which is in com Google common collect. And now I'm going to try and create something immutable. There's uh, quite a few things. I'm just going to do a set and use one of the convenient factory methods here that allow you to create small sets of various sizes. So I'm just going to do something like this. And we have a set. And this is actually a nice segue to a completely unrelated feature in JDK9. They added these uh, static factory methods and collections. So now you can actually achieve a similar result just by using JDK. So I could, could have done something like set of one, two, three. And indeed, if I call get class on this, it's uh, an immutable collection from within the JDK. So I'm going to leave you with uh, the history of everything that we've done here. I'm going to uh, export it to a file and post it on Twitter somewhere, just in case you want to come back to this, because I don't really have proper slides. And that's basically it. So if you want to know more uh, about JShell, uh, definitely try the help command. Uh, shows you what the available options are. I haven't covered a bunch of things uh, in this talk because there just wasn't enough space. I haven't talked about navigation. There's a bunch of cool shortcuts for inferring variable types for showing Java doc, uh, or just you know browsing history, searching in history, that sort of thing. And I haven't talked about configuration at all. You can also customize a few things around JShell. JShell also has an API, and a really cool exercise is uh, trying and explore JShell API from JShell. And if you want to do that, you should start with the JShell class in this package here. There's also JEP222, which is the REPL JEP. It's a pretty good reading. They describe the motivation for creating the tool and just overall how it works. So definitely check it out. Also check out uh, Project Kula, which is uh, a code name for the REPL project in OpenJDK. They have a mailing list there and some more information. Uh, and then tomorrow, there's a longer uh, full 50-minute session about JHL given by Robert here. And he's the lead engineer on JHL, so he definitely knows what he's talking about. So if you have any questions, please direct them at Robert. No. <laughs> please do ask them now. <laughs> Happy to answer any of them. OK, great. Thank you. And if you have any questions, I'll be around. Thank mm -hmm. you.